There are a lot of names here. I just need to separate them all in my head. Felicity Vale was in bed with this chap, Neville. And when Duncan walked in and found them together, I mean, he was just gaga about Fliss. Gaga, all told. God knows how much he'd drunk that night. He just opened a window and... Okay, we'll leave it there then for tonight. Obviously, I'll uh, need more from both of you. For now, if we organise a couple of cars to run you home, you see to that way. You two haven't got to be anywhere special, have you? Uh, yeah, but we've already told you everything. We've... But I don't think we got a formal statement down, did we? If you just pop next door, this WPC Hicks for a moment. while I get your version down in here. What do you mean, version? Inspector, I don't very much like the implication behind it. Madeline McGallan. How are we spelling that surname? Oh, hang on. Of course. It'll be on here, won't it? Scales of Injustice. An expose of ten shamefully inept criminal prosecutions compiled by... One G... Two hours. This is unreal. What am I, Joseph K? You realise this is totally and completely illegal when I haven't been charged or anything? Look. I need to go to the toilet. Serious? You know what? This is bordering on date rape. Before you touch anything, I'd like to see your fingernails. So, just to get my bearings again here. When we arrived, the front door was bolted on the inside, wasn't it? Back door locked, windows all locked, and the only people inside the house, apart from the victim, were you and your friend Lassie in there. Oh, we, we both strangled her between us and then rang you up so you'd come round and arrest us. No, not too fast. We both strangled her. Oh, very good. Why was it, do you suppose, you weren't nominated at the British Comedy Awards? Come on. Thank you, Wakey. Hello? Jonathan Creek, in any respect. Oh, God. I was being strangled by a giant badger. What time is it? Perhaps it's time to go to bed. We didn't get into a gun seven. Those bastards. You wait till I get the chance to make them sweat. How come when I stay at your place, you get the bed and I get the sofa, and when you stay at my place, you still get the bed and I get the sofa? Because you're being terribly chivalrous and gentlemanly and very solicitous of my welfare. Do I get anything to eat? So, logically, there are only two possibilities here, basically. Number one is he got it wrong, and the man she saw wasn't this Duncan Proctor bloke, just someone who looked a bit like him. Or two, it was him, and he isn't really dead. Except he is. Because his chums were all there the night he threw himself out that second floor window. Is that what she said? That's what she said. Where'd you keep your salt? See that cupboard just above you? The top shelf right at the back. There's a leaflet from the hospital explaining why it's bad for your arteries. Well, 
all right? Evidence. Which I made a list now. But no doubt you can remember it all, Mr. Photographic Memory. That pipe under the wash basin. Duncan Proctor was a pipe smoker. I suppose you'll say it could have been put there deliberately. It was put there deliberately. Because? If it had fallen from someone's pocket, some of that loose ash would have spilled out when it hit the floor. Hang on a minute, this doesn't make sense, does it? Why are you going to frame a man who everyone knows is dead? The big question is, why did he take off her stockings after he'd killed her and throw them in that bin? How did you work that out? You said three of them had just been washed. The other two, fairly obviously, she'd been wearing. Where'd you get obviously? Because her shoes were lying next to her on the floor. A pair of tight-fitting boots. There's no way they fell off. They were deliberately removed there in the bathroom. And would you wear a pair of boots like that on your bare feet? All right. But the word why springs to mind. It's got an echo of something I just can't access. What the hell does that remind you of? Oh, we'll pop it when it's ready. So what are your plans for today? My plans? Our plans? What do you think? Going back to Gallows Gate. To find out how a young woman could be murdered by a ghost. Look, you've seen everything there is to see. I've had three journalists around here already today. My hairdryer's just exploded, so it's not exactly the best time in the world no to problem. see. Jonathan will fix that for you. He's brilliant with anything electrical, can't you? So she was here first, then. Felicity. You've been sharing with her how long? Coming up to two years. Ironically, I thought it would be safer out here from crime. Burglaries. Well, you've just been on the receiving end. You know how bad it gets in London. Never dreamt that... What did she do, then, exactly? Some sort of graphic designer. She was a cartoonist. Animation work. I don't know if you've seen that advert for soup with the mushrooms all jumping off a diving board into the pot. <laughs> You're kidding. Are you an artist as well? Me? I'm going to draw a circle round a penny. <laughs> Osteopathy is my line of work. I have a little practice in town off the Charing Cross Road. Last night was a bit of a late one. <laughs> if I'd got back half an hour earlier. Machine. Yes, I noticed that last night. No, I, I mean the second one. I put another tape in here, brand new, this morning, to replace the one that went missing. Now that's gone as well. How in the name of God did that... Oh, great, we're back in action. I did my best. So this party you all went to at Duncan's house, and where'd you say it was? Northumberland. The other end of the earth, it felt like. You didn't know where to go? I've no family, as far as I know. You've been in the army a couple of years. Had some friends who were still serving. But you never saw it as a career. And when you met Felicity, you just fell hopelessly in love. I don't think Duncan loved Fliss. She wasn't easy to love. She wasn't easy to understand at all. He was obsessed with her, which is quite another thing. And that's why he did it, I'm sure, when he found out about Neville. To punish her. Of course, a week later, Neville had already found someone else. Oriental lady. That's right. He told Fliss it was all over. She just couldn't deal with. I mean, it demolished her completely. So, how did you do it? Sorry? Duncan. How could he have jumped to his death from that parapet in full view of everyone and then come back again three weeks later to commit a murder? How can he possibly still be alive? Well, he can't, can he? Oh, yeah, he is. <laughs> what do you mean? I thought that was why you before. You mean you don't know? Know what? The police rang just before you arrived. Those boots Felicity was wearing that she bought brand new only three days ago. Duncan's fingerprints were all over them. Oh, oh I don't know what to say. One word would do it. Yes. Evening. Neville Bruce, is it? We haven't met. Madeline McGillan? I hope you don't mind. I rang your secretary at work. She was incredibly helpful. Very nice telephone manner as well. I'd come on to her if I were you. Tell me if I'm interrupting anything, by the way. I just need to have a brief word about Felicity Vale, who I understand you were quite heavily involved with before, um... <laughs> you know, obviously, that she was found strangled to death last night at her cottage. I've told the police everything I know. Who are you? I'm a professional investigator, acting on behalf of the Deceased Life Assurance Company. 
any information you can give us could help speed up the processing of her family's claim. I was wondering if you could tell me, for instance, when you last actually saw Miss Vale alive. It would have been a couple of days ago. She came round to my house. She was rather hysterical, and I had to be blunt with her about how things stood. I don't know if they told you, but there was a witness who actually saw the murder take place. In fact, she's identified the killer. As Duncan Proctor, which speaks volumes for the accuracy of her testimony. Well, she has now looked at a lot of photos. Of Forgive her. me, but I was in the room when he jumped. I saw him on the ground. No human being on earth could walk away from that. The man is dead. I'm sorry, she's mistaken. She could be mistaken, Mr. Bruce, but how do we explain the fingerprints? Fingerprints? Duncan Proctor's fingerprints were all over her shoes and the door handles, everywhere. The whole thing's been checked and double-checked. I think I'll go for the roast salmon mousse and the artichoke carts. Thanks. So, any background you can give me, really, on this young lady? I'll try not to be too indelicate, but these things could impact upon the crime. During the period you were having sex together, did she ever talk in her sleep, can you remember, about other lovers? Or, at a critical moment in bed, for instance, accidentally scream out someone else's name? Oh, I don't know, it's like travelling back to the Stone Age coming here. I mean, look at this. This is the pits, Jonathan. Hasn't even got an S. Look at that. The, the S is completely snapped off. Well, try not to use it, then. Try not to use it. It's the most common letter in the English language. No, it's not. E's the most common. S is the eighth most common, after E, T, A, O, N, R and I. Oh, you'd have to know that, wouldn't you? A useless piece of information. Not useless at all if you're trying to crack a cipher. Well, funnily enough, Jonathan, I'm not trying to crack a cipher at this precise moment. I'm not actually cracking anything very much. I've got a murder here committed by a dead man in a house he couldn't have got out of, involving a girl found horribly trangled with her hoe and tocking removed in the down-tear cloakroom. Oh, have you ever heard of silence? I'm trying to achieve a level of abstract thought here. I'm trying to prize this whatever it is at my memory. What is it? Let me have a go. I told you, I can't put it into words. It's purely intuitive, it's just a feeling. It won't come into focus till it's ready. I thought perhaps that image might have triggered it, but... I could put them on. Well, how's that going to help? Well, the whole point is they've been taken off. Yes, this is the home of Pro Magnum Man. Can I help to... Claire! Yeah. You kidding? She had another tape stolen from the answer machine. What are you saying? You put a third one in, and when you got back that a bit... If someone was trying to get hold of a message that didn't know which tape it was on... Well, it depends what you mean by progress. To be honest, we were both just saying, the only way we're ever going to solve this, basically, is to actually go up there. Won't we? Yes. Well, I said that. Up where? Northumberland! Have you any idea how long this is going to take? Got the route all sorted. We'll be five hours max. Yeah, and the rest with your navigational skills. Look. Anyway, I wonder how the police are getting on back at the cottage. No envy them that job, one little bit. What job? I gave Detective Inspector Barrison a quick ring this morning before we left. All that business about the telephone answer machine. Well, of course, there was something I completely forgotten to tell him. And I was there that night. I saw one of those tapes floating in the lavatory. And wouldn't you know it, I accidentally knocked the handle and flushed it away. Probably a vital piece of evidence. <laughs> yes, yeah, all right. Haven't you ever seen a cesspit before? Let's get searching. Is that definitely the turning? Yes, definitely. You definitely saw a sign for the 6342. Yes, definitely. As God is my judge which is presumably why we ended up in Gateshead. I was sure it said 6342. How can Hadrian's Wall run north to south? What, the Romans divided the country up lengthwise now, did they? Two and a half hours we lost because of that. Will you give over moaning? I've forgotten what we're looking for now. There's a Victorian phone box here somewhere on the corner. There it is. First left and we're there. This was completely open. Listen, nearly went in. Name's not been added yet. What do you reckon? Get a shovel and see. Yes, thank you, Dr Van Helsing. Perhaps we'll look round first. Can you imagine anyone rattling around on their own in a place this size? It's immoral. You say he took it over when he came out of uniform. And his old army pals, whatever their names were... Ben and Buster. ..were both at this party. What do we know about them? I made a point of not knowing them. 
They're still serving. I suppose they'll be back overseas somewhere by. What's he doing? The breaststroke? <laughs> When you came out that night and saw him on the ground, can you show me how he was lying? Yes, it was just here. His head was over the edge, a bit more towards the... Yeah. Yeah. About like that, I'd say. Roughly. Still some of the blood here where he landed. I say? Something very wrong with that for a start, wouldn't you say? Could I? Did you ever watch Quincy? Felicity's birthday present to Duncan. I don't think he was exactly overwhelmed. Oh. Oh. Look, you know what? You want to get that seen to by a qualified osteopath. What do you think? Give him a quick scene to on the bed while I make a couple of calls. I could have a look at it if you want. Yes, thanks all the same. Anything that involves turning my skeleton inside out, I get kind of twitchy. Oh, just get your kit off. Right, you sure? Nothing. OK. And that's for the whole night and the morning. 21st into the 22nd. All right, that's great. Thanks for your help, then. Bye. Oh. Where is it, then? Where's what? Sorry, I thought I heard a baby up here screaming its head off. OK, three out of the four local funeral directors haven't heard of him. The other one I couldn't get hold of. Local rag, nothing in the obit columns. Most importantly, the hospital have no record of any Duncan Proctor, no admissions, no DOAs, no call-outs even to this address on the night in question. The ambulance came and took him away. We all saw it. And what you see isn't always what's happening. And what you all saw that night, I've got a horrible feeling, it was a very brilliantly conceived hoax. Here we go. He's going to tell us how it was done. Well, I know I'd have done it, but from what I've seen out there... Shh. What? You hear that? What? Front door just opened. There. Closed again. How can you hear that from all the way up here? Shh. Someone moving about now, in the hall. They're going to have a look, then. Why me? Because you're the man. think you'll find Danny Badgers in there, will you, Mr. Creek? What happens if they draw a blank? When they draw a blank, they'll fill it all in again. Duncan Proctor's body is no more at the bottom of that grave than that answer tape 
was in her sewage tank. My God, what are you telling me? The killer must have somehow realised and got there before you and fished it out. I don't think they'll be buying your next book, any of them. There's only so much crap a man can wade through. So, we know this lover's leap thing was a setup. A dead man's not going to be suspected of murder. What we, in our flat-footed ignorance, are still trying to figure out is how the hell he faked it. Someone said you work for a magician. How uncannily appropriate. Well, I've had a sniff round, given it a bit of thought. Go on. Three people saw him jump. Everyone saw him on the ground, but nobody saw him land. In between, there was a gap of maybe seven or eight seconds, which is when they did the clever bit. They? Oh, there's no way he could have done it on his own. He needed at least two accomplices, one up top and one below. Buster and Ben. Whatever their names were, his two chums from the Lancers. Look where it stands up. Duncan's got this total mind-numbing crush on Felicity. He knows she's screwing Neville. He decides to teach them both a lesson. It's a sort of sick joke. You can imagine three drunken soldiers dreaming up between them. They just go for it, like a military exercise. Leaping off a second floor balcony is no big deal, if there's something to catch you at the bottom. You dug yourself a big hole with a tightly sprung net inside, rigged up a camouflage frame covered in turf, which slides across in seconds so you can't see the joint. As per the plan, one of them rushes in as he's about to jump. So if the other two get to the balcony too quickly, he can hold them back for a minute, tell them not to look or whatever. During which time, Duncan's out of the net and into position. The hole's disappeared, and so is his friend, making sure he's first on the scene to pronounce him dead, wave everyone else away. Half an hour later, he's whisked off in an ambulance. Could have been a couple of locals who were in on it. Could have been pucker ambulance drivers who were paid to keep their mouths shut. The main thing is, his body's gone, and no one asks any questions. They put it all right again afterwards, obviously. They can still see a slight camber where the level's a bit off. And of course, there was the dummy blood on the patio, carefully deposited just before he fell to look fresh. Problem is, you can see from the scalloped edges around the splash marks, they've been dropped from a height of several feet. And you don't normally start bleeding before you hit the ground. These two squaddies are serving abroad somewhere, did I hear? But their house is made of ale. My God, I've just had a thought. Well, he's got to be hiding somewhere. She's free to go, back to Scotland. Mr. Klaus, we've barely started with her. As long as Proctor exercises his right to silence, she's the only case we've got. Fingerprints alone won't do it. Uh, Inspector, you can't know how deeply traumatized this experience has left my sister. Night after night now, she can't sleep. Many a night I can't sleep. No, no. You don't understand the full horror of the situation. She can't sleep. Alone. Three o'clock in the morning. Like something from the nightmare world of M.R. James. As the duvet is lifted up, and you feel it sliding in beside you. Or to wake in the night, to those eyes staring at you on the pillow. For mercy's sake, Inspector, I'm appealing to you for clemency. I'm sorry. We need her down here.
Oh, now, I like the look of this one. It's got a Pentium processor, CD-ROM. And look at this, state of the art stuff, Jonathan. It's got an S. Because you can type words like floppy disk instead of floppy dick. Just browsing, thanks. So, this will be chapter four. What do you reckon? A bit Perry Mason, for the time being, anyway. Now, intro. I wonder why he won't confess. Proctor? Bit of a stupid question, isn't it? Why? He was seen throttling her to death through the window. Save everyone a lot of time and money. It's all wrong still. There's too much stuff left over that doesn't fit. Those three tapes that were stolen from her answer machine. They found one of them, one of the blank ones, in that flat. But we still don't know what happened to the other two, and we still don't know why they were taken. Well, what you said? There was a message he wanted to get back. Probably one he'd left himself that proved he was still alive. Well, that would explain why I go back once, but why twice? To come away with a blank tape, it's obvious the message has either been erased or removed. What if the third tape was taken by someone else? He was also trying to get hold of that message. He didn't know Duncan Proctor had already been back for it. I'm running out of showrooms. And of course, there's the other problem. Why did he take her stockings off her? Jonathan, you don't think perhaps you've got an unnatural fixation with this stockings thing? More than is healthy? Electric shock therapy could be the answer. Stick your fingers in this cigarette lighter and concentrate hard on a pair of sheer... What? What now? That's what it reminded me of. That's exactly it. Bootlaces. I beg your pardon? Different choice of words, and it popped. He didn't take off her stockings, he took her stockings off her. Please have never believed that in a million years. Obviously, that's why he's not saying anything. About what? Jonathan, will you stop talking Martian? Come on. We're going to get back and go through this whole thing again from top to bottom. Every little detail, what everyone said to you. Why? So we can find out who it was that really murdered Felicity Vale. doing this, don't I? Keep interrupting your love life. Uh, this is our senior claims investigator, by the way, Mr. Creek. Only we've been right back to the beginning of this case now, with Miss Salinger here, and there's a couple of rather vital points that we need to clarify with yourself and Mr. Bruce. What the hell is your game? Can't you wait till tomorrow, for God's sake? <laughs> it's a quarter past midnight. Is it? You'd better put some strong coffee on, then. No milk in mine, two sugars, thanks. Three tapes. Were stolen from that answer machine one after the other. Why? Let's say there was a very important message on the original, which, for whatever reason, was removed from the machine on the night of the murder. Next day, Claire puts a new tape in, a blank one, which at some point during the day is also stolen. And again, the day after that, the same thing happens. We know that Duncan Proctor had one of the blank tapes. It was found at the flat when the police brought him in. The other one, had to have been taken by someone else. Who was just as desperate to get hold of that message? What? For cuts, I, I mean, you... What? A young woman's lost her life, Mr Bruce. A woman you loved, or claimed to love, even if it was only for five minutes. I think we're entitled to a bit more than splutters and a blank look. Never. I just... Reached the last limit. I'm sorry. When I saw what she'd done to Kika with those scissors, picked up the phone the machine was on, I just tore into her, held nothing back, just poured it out. Two minutes of poison. And threats? Warnings, certainly. About what would happen if I ever saw her again. At any rate, it wasn't a tape you want lying around after she'd been found murdered. The following day, I found a way in, grabbed the tape, hoping the message would still be on it. Of course it wasn't. But then the pressure suddenly eased when you heard that Duncan Proctor had been seen committing the murder. Even if that message did ever turn up, no one was going to suspect you. <laughs> yes, but I... You're not suggest... She saw him do it. He's been found alive and arrested. What more proof do you need? Duncan strangled Felicity. Except he didn't, actually. Of course, neither did you, Mr Bruce. That's why you rang her up. Because you were nowhere near the cottage that night. 
there was a third person in the house who witnessed the whole weird and wonderful event. And I think now might be the time to put your hand up, don't you? Claire? And tell us exactly how you murdered her. We've had quite an interesting afternoon, actually, with a police pathologist. Turns out those deep lesions in the victim's neck contained some skin cells that didn't belong to Felicity or to Duncan, but funnily enough, matched up exactly to some still in Jonathan's shoulders after your fingers had been digging into them yesterday afternoon. You'll testify to the power of her grip, I think. Rosas will be waiting for you at home. Wouldn't bother going anywhere. Duncan was seen by a witness that night, violently strangling Felicity at the kitchen window. And yet, he did nothing of the kind. What Kitty saw, she didn't really see at all. Did she? Felicity was so obvious. She didn't even have to try. But men like it obvious, don't they? Men like Duncan. In the space of three weeks, I went the distance from idolising him, grieving for him, to despising the pair of them. He didn't love women. He just wanted them to love him. And when I came back that night, I saw him there, alive. At first, I was too shocked to do anything. I heard him telling her what he'd done, how he'd gone to ground at Buster's, giving her all that phony contrition while she just ranted and raved. She was already in a complete state about Neville. It only needed one more push to send her over. And of course, at that moment, it came. last time, Felicity. I don't love you. I loathe you. I despise you. Now stay away. And you want to know the truth? I was willing her on. Oh, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. I think she passed out for a while. But now he realised what he was dealing with. He was just going to make her safe and get the hell out. So he took her into the bathroom, where she couldn't do any damage. Took the stockings off the radiator and the ones she was wearing. He wasn't going to leave her any rope to hang herself with, literally. And then left. kill someone out of spite. Maybe. Because it was so ridiculously easy. His fingerprints were all over the house. I made sure they found his pipe. All I had to do was sit tight and wait for them to prove he was still alive. Who was going to believe his story? You took the tape out of the machine with Neville's message on it. Because you didn't want the police thinking he had anything to do with her death. You wanted all the evidence to point to Duncan. So, why did Duncan want to get that tape back, for God's sake? To corroborate his account of what really happened. That your message drove her to try and kill herself. Even then, it was all going to sound pretty flimsy. Yes, the wonderful bonus of Kitty, seeing him with his hands around her throat. <laughs> you must have thought it was meant to be. The only problem was, it brought us onto the scene. I don't know they weren't just knocking about. It's none of their business, all this. Larking above. Oh, it's the grave. I'll be miles away by now, but you never know. You want to cover the front entrance while I do the back? 
I thought once you'd found it all locked up, you'd go away. Then when I heard the window... There's one thing about this whole business I still don't quite understand. Hmm? Why you swallowed all that crap I gave you about skin cells in Jonathan's shoulders. Still, I suppose it broke the ice. So, what made you think that I could have... One, I finally remembered that routine of taking a prisoner's bootlaces off him so he can't hang himself. Which put a completely different spin on the whole thing. What Duncan was really doing with his hands around her throat. And, of course, the other thing was the burglary. And they took the tapes. Why? No, Claire. Not your burglary, my burglary. You remember the morning after when you were showing me around the cottage? Ironically, I thought it would be safer out here from crime. Well, you've just been on the receiving end. You know how bad it gets in London. It never struck me till we went over it again this afternoon. How the hell did you know about my house being burgled? I certainly hadn't mentioned it. But then I remembered. I had. And there was only one way you could have heard me. How did that burglar got to my place the other day? Turned it over? He didn't just give up, did he, the bastard? you breathe a word of that to a living soul now? I was told in complete confidence. Ladies and gentlemen, the living legend that is Huey Harper.